Abshini, we are talking cars. So if you've got like 200,000 rands to spend and you want a trusted, reliable and family sized FCV, you could always opt for one of these. This is a 2011 Toyota Fortuna, the 3 liter D4D and it is a 7 seater. So as far as looks are concerned, I think it has aged quite, quite well because it is over 10 years old. And yeah, looking at that from the front, you can see that the headlights are quite big, the grille is big, the fog lights are big, the scoop used on the hood is quite big, so everything on the car is quite gigantic. Yeah, it really is one of those cars which really do justice to the weight uh, SUV, which is short for sports utility vehicle. Sports, okay, maybe not so much. Utility, definitely, and of course vehicle. So from the sides, you can see like you really get this huge cladding. You also do get the big, uh, uh, the big rims, which are great because they also are accompanied by these chunky tires, which is great for poor, poor road conditions and potholes. Definitely, definitely do approve of that. So since the car is also quite big, there is a side step to then use to get inside the car. Notice that on the fender it says the liter D4D, which is then to remind you that you've got uh, the big boy or the big engine in this case. You do also do get a bit of nice chrome used on the mirror housing itself. So as far as the side goes, and yeah, I think it is an honest SUV, really is straight to the point. And yeah, let's really look into it. So from the rear, I think it still looks quite decent. You get this uh, horizontally styled tail lights with a chrome strip running right next to it. And yeah, it looks quite decent. Uh, the spare wheel is housed over there, which is a fully sized spare wheel. So not a biscuit or a space save or any of that crap. And I think it, even though it's quite finicky to use since it's underneath the car, it couldn't be housed anywhere else. So I think it gets a thumbs up mainly for being a fully sized spare wheel. We also do benefit from a, a PDC and really do like the use of PDC or the such big cars. It really does make parking a lot, a lot easier. And yeah, so it is quite straight to the point. There isn't too much to look at from the rear. It is quite a straightforward offering. Hmm. Decent, decent. I like, think it has aged well. Well done Toyota. As for the interior overview, so starting with the door card, hard plastics used on top of it, a bit of leather treatment over here hard robust plastic used all around so this is the theme a bit of let's call it woodwork <laughs> yeah a bit of wood uh, like insert really suits the caliber of the car I, I like it i don't know what what do you guys think i, I personally like it uh, controls for your windows your central locking and a bit of modification used over there now into the interior Right, you get uh, an electronically adjustable driver's uh, seat, which is also finished in this beige cream leather, and it has, you know, it has aged a bit, but it's a decade old. It, it makes sense. Could really be better, but that is down to the owner and how they really took the car. Otherwise, it really looks nice. It still is decent. No tears whatsoever on the seat. Uh, you can notice a bit of wear on your touch points Yeah, but I guess it's understandable for a for, for car that is uh, this old and Simply no nonsense approach used over here. So This is where you adjust your mirrors and then your diff lock. This is the 4x2 So it is front wheel driven. You also do get uh, an all-wheel drive version, which is the, the 4x4. So on this one there isn't a gear. The other one would normally have like a smaller gear, like gear on the side, which is then something that can use to either change the mode or yeah, whatever that is. So yeah, this is the basic interior. Nothing screams out, nothing fancy. Hard plastics used all around. Quick, let me step in. Prints folder. Space for a file or book whatever big steering wheel not for market radio have to charge plastics used all around and yeah this is this is the basic interior this is what Toyota is offering you in the US type like there isn't nothing that stands out particularly about this interior it is old school basic controls are there and that's really what you get so just a quick one space for whatever thing on the other side 
luckily it came with this uh, automatic aircon which is nice and strong you can also operate the rear aircon from this this area from this button i mean and then this is the way you then turn off uh, your traction control so i don't know why i'd want to do that in this car Pro probably something that an experienced off-roader would use you know to get out of those muddy conditions i wouldn't know uh, 12 volt power supply over the side so since this car we really do recommend smoking there is an old school cigarette lighter with an edge tray really nice little smoker out there yeah take care of those lungs and then yeah a two-tone color palette it's light and cream on this side that can on this area for the purpose of this video i want to refer to this as wood i don't know what it is but for today only wood. nice wood inside which is very utilitarian Really nicely, it's 10 year old plus okay, 10 year plus old, so nice. Mm, digital clock, at least there's a gate and outside temperature gate. But yeah, there isn't really much. Hey, eh? one important button that you shouldn't forget when, when using this car this is your diff lock. So, this is basically what you use uh, at speeds less than 10 kilometers per hour in like picture, really muddy condition, and yeah, everything the tires are spinning and so forth really don't get traction out of it so you can use a death block and it'll age when you get it out of that sticky situation hmm. I like that rinse hold and they really install something use this air vent to blow cold air into it's a nice cold ring really nice basic basic analog controls currently sitting at 211,000 kilometers and this is a very robust interior nothing is broken there are no tears on it nothing you know, basically you can see that and yeah there are marks and points where you know there's one of it but this is normal wear and tear right in fact this is beyond normal because everything else looks perfect a bit of wear on the leather seat but no tears uh that is yeah there could be a number of reasons for this maybe the chemical used in terms of cleaning the car or the seat yeah it really is negligible in that sense so take off your seat and they will last but not tear armrest it is hard plastic so yeah not comfortable to use but it works right so this is a utilitarian base this is the utilitarian as you so yeah whatever you get in this car is meant to stand the test of time it is meant to last and really last a long time so I want to complain about that you can open it and access yeah, this area so you can see it on there too yeah this is it as for the rear bench so they also benefit from the same treatment as the, as the front guys so you get hard plastics used on top of the door card leather there hard plastics there a mini wallet over there a drinks holder there. And then yeah this is what the seats are like for the rear they are very comfortable and uh yeah they really helps to the test of time so this is testament to that uh, japanese workmanship that we really are going to give you something that's reliable and will not break over time so i like these seats they are nice and squishy nice and comfortable no tears whatsoever and they also come uh, with this armrest so under normal circumstances you find a drinks holder there or there but hey they're down there so look down and then yeah this has one of a bit it is, it is tiered but then otherwise yeah it is through the test of time really well no other tiers i can report and this is it this is nice so they also benefit from the rear aircon and they are your vents this is where you would control uh, the, the air speed and airflow. Okay, not really the airflow, just the speed. Yeah, either low or high. Something in between as well. So, how do you really access the other two seats from the back? Pull this lever, magic happens. And then there's also this one, which you like move to the front. The seat is unlocked. Then you simply lift it up and you can walk right inside. Well, if these two were, were open, they close down. So you can also open these seats, which I will show you in a minute. 
and then that's how your, your, your set of people are with this open the boot is really small but with the, the clothes and the, and the setup then there's quite a bit of space for it so it really is up to you uh, seven seats no space or five seats and decent space to move but it, it really is nice to have a car that caters for all those things and you move the side and you move it but anyway so uh, from the boot the opening is quite big so you can fit a number of items these are camping chairs and yeah this is their day notice that uh, the seats are currently closed right or not not being used. so yeah let's let's yeah bear with me hmm okay that is now uh, open well let's open it so you can fully see this one-handed approach is not working i need to hire a cameraman of some sort this is it with uh, the seats open yeah they open yeah with the seats open so there isn't much space for you to use I'd rather use so you can decide do you want to use uh, the five seats and have a bit of space or use seven seats and have minimal space and attach a trailer probably you'll get to decide but it's nice to, to chop and change that as your needs change you know yeah really really nice is nice that you can configure the boot area in accordance to your to your needs so right now we've got one seat that is closed one open and then there's a bit of space for the user on this side so instead we could use could do this and use that for something else right so yeah it really is this is to show that you really can you know customize your boot area as, as, as you wish if you want to if you really do at this rate for the space and you don't need this seat you also can unmount the seats over there this is the mounting point we really unmount but mount remove and keep in the house or wherever and sell them if you want to it is your car nobody will tell you what to do with your car and your seat so driving with the little dvd what are my initial impressions there's plenty of talk from our road so i think uh the rpm is between the rpm range is between 1000 4000 and i think maximum torque is available down of probably like 1.2 thousand rpms to probably like three yeah which is quite decent for a diesel vehicle this feels like a traditional suv uh, a diesel one so everything on the car is quite nothing it, it isn't loud but the diesel itself the diesel engine itself is not as refined as what you find these 10 years later of course so expect a more traditional approach when it comes to this diesel sound i, I enjoy it i don't think it's very loud at all uh, but it's it's there you can hear it and then over the humps yeah very utilitarian so it shakes a bit just a tiny little bit but nothing much i think i really do like this uh fortuna car so in terms of power how much power does it have 343 newton meters of torque quite a traditional SUV let's put it through its paces okay maybe not so much because it's still uh, cold it's not warm as yet not advisable to simply start and thrash the car so we want to apply it let it um, get up to operating temps and then give it the beat but don't expect any fireworks or firecrackers it is just a really good SUV with plenty of pulling power it feels like it can pull anything in anything that is anything so whether it be a boat it be a trailer cars whatever you name it i feel like i have enough power to pull anything and yeah it, it pace is quite satisfactory steering wheel also is not as direct of course it wouldn't be as direct in this uh, in this case you know in this application it is there's a bit of play but yeah that's it and then in terms of the car is really big you know 
car as you can see it's a, it's a family size SUV so expect certain elements to take place so as you come to a stop you can sort of like feel the weight of the car or the mass of the car rather and as, and on cabs as well you're not really winning any races as far as that is concerned forget about it um, yeah it is just a very you just need to be careful of how you, you drive it, especially on cabs because it's big there's a lot of body roll what is body roll body roll is how the car leans as you not not necessarily approach but as you take on a cab so on the cab depending on the speed that you're doing the higher the speed the more roll you'd expect right yeah it leans a bit more Almost in its natural habitat are these off-roading conditions. Well, these aren't off-roading conditions, but off the road, you know? Yeah, where it will get to do all sort of uh, trickery and dance from one end to the other side. This is where the Fortuna lives. This is where it thrives. But anyway, uh, our party has to be short-lived because we cannot find an ideal place to do that. We must get on the road. On the road, plenty of talk all the way from 1400 rpms to 3800 rpms it's not gonna really blow your head off uh, or your hair or whatever it's called yeah don't expect fireworks or firecrackers but expect to get going it's 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 like a marathon runner if i may put it like that doesn't seem quick at first lens but you if you're not careful then it's off it's gone you see it now you see it no more yeah as simple as that so it might not feel too quick but it to me it feels fairly quick and in fact i've seen it pull away and yeah if you're not careful then it leaves you behind so in terms of talk how many newton meters are we talking 343 newton meters of talk that is pulling power enough to pull your family to pull your boat probably to pull one or two cars we've done that before and basically anything that moves yeah it can pull it I, I trust it to do that and i don't really have details in terms of towing capacity and so forth because i am not like oh yeah i'm not really i don't have much information when it comes to off-roading and such it's not really one of the things that i know best but otherwise driving it in the city it is comfortable uh, one thing you will hear in terms of in fact let's let's address nvh uh, uh, levels noise vibration harshness it is slightly i wouldn't say i wouldn't call it harsh uh but it, it's it's loud and what you really and loud in the sense that only because this one is a, is, a, is, a, is a diesel variant so the engine noise permeates into the interior right but nothing too obstructive if, if that makes sense so you don't really hear anything else so wind noise whatever whatever you don't really get or tire noise nothing like that but engine noise because this is a traditional it's an old school engine so granted you will then hear the, the there's a rumble you know starting it from a cold engine it also is quite loud in fact it remains a loud engine throughout throughout in, its entire one million kilometer cycle yeah i think it really has the power the capability to, to do more than that it's, it's a very robust unit and that's why you would want to consider such an old car in this day and age it doesn't look that old it still still looks quite okay and yeah it feels quite okay to drive as well i love it for you know when it comes to speed hump there i love it for mainly uh it's pulling progress when it comes to pulling stuff and going off-roading or poor road conditions that's where the fortuna thrives you know uh, as a long distance um suv it's 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 fairly well you know the fact that you can there can be seven of you inside the car it makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense but bear in mind of course boat area would be limited when when it comes to that but you decide power plenty i think in fact no 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 uh the torque plenty what is the torque the pulling power how the car feels as you put your foot down how it feels like it's pulling you back something like that i um, hope i am explaining it in some in a way that makes a bit of sense um quite satisfied with that and yeah when i drive this car i drive it in a more, in a, in a more relaxed 
man i know that i you can't trash it you can because the gearbox can take it and the engine it, it just pulls like right green through but i prefer to drive it in a very sedated manner i i don't like abusing this car you know even though it can take it i just prefer yeah cruising this car for me steering wheel is not as direct because this is a very this is a buggy based suv so this is a hilux slash suv so yeah it will wobble around on the road here and there it will feel very utilitarian it will also do very buggy based activities which i'm going to demonstrate at any point yeah i'm going to i'm going to show it so yeah i mean fortuna is quite yeah it's quite a very popular car no wonder everybody steals this car it really is made to last that that is evident through throughout it's a car that you buy and keep buy and enjoy and depending on what you do with it it will most likely it's a multi-purpose it should have been called an, an mpv a multi-purpose vehicle i don't know why suv because it's not really sporty but for me this is a proper multi-purpose vehicle so i can drive it to work and back yeah i know doesn't really chow a lot of diesel i think yeah it doesn't chow a lot of diesel the average right now is 10.4 kilometers per liter so one liter covers like 10 k's so uh that's a figure of like 10 liters per hundred right which is fair especially for a big suv like this really really good numbers i think yeah really solid numbers so it's quite fuel efficient uh, it all lasts, especially for on, on the highway, long distances. It's a great car. I really can't. I, 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 am I saying it praises? I don't know. But even if I am, it, it, it deserves it, you know? Especially if you know why you'd want to buy this car, then it deserves a lot of praise. Speaking of doing uh, regular off-roading activities, let, 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 let me demonstrate. I can easily do something like this. This is climbing a curb. Hope you can see it's quite steep but because i'm a fortuna i will do it anyway hmm. must be nice so if you get to the mall and it's packed just find really big pavement and drive over it so yeah uh, i hope i was able to demonstrate really do love the, the fortuna does a lot of things all at once and yeah really is a good last a good long lasting friend pricing quite fit doesn't really depreciate much well that's if you can hold on to it so if they don't hijack you or split it off your hands and then you will likely still buy it okay you, it will be expensive to buy but also it will still be yeah it will keep its value or, or yeah it will hold on to its I want to say a residual value, but it's not, maybe it's not really clicking in my head. So it all doesn't depreciate much. Let's let's rather use that word. Yeah, let's put it through its paces once again. We're going uphill a bit. Yeah, we are going. We are moving for sure. Yeah, moves, moves. Not bad, not bad, not bad at all. And the engine and the gearbox. This is one of those traditional gearboxes where you fill each and every gear change. But how it works out in this Fortuna, it's smooth. You know, one to second, you can feel mm, just like that, you know. Mm, you, but you feel it. You you can feel it change, but it's you predictable also. Yeah, I also do enjoy that. Because eh? it I can predict when it's gonna change, I can drive it. And, and make it change where I want it to change which is great for me because if you drive a manual you know at which points do you prefer shifting it depending on the car of course so I can possibly do that in this Fortuna and yeah so poor this road is quite poor and we think I think we have a worn out uh, bushing so it is slightly noisy on the right hand side under these conditions Yeah, so this is it with our review. We've enjoyed the car. We've speaking of pavements, I can easily climb into onto that. That's one thing I do love about the Fortuna. It, it gives me that power that I can drive over anything, 
wet especially in, in like rainy season yeah summer is almost here and it will be wet everywhere in fortuna you feel like you are the man you can really drive and in almost anything you know in mud whatever there's a diff lock for that which is great to use works like a charm and yeah those are the other benefits that i like so much about this car more than it's um more than anything else and yeah this is it for the driving part of it what are my final thoughts on the fortuna uh, with new car prices being so high i think there's space for this car it still offers you a lot more value and makes a bit of sense not a bit a lot of sense um pricing we're looking at it the most affordable one i could find was 190,000, and it had 300,000 case on the clock so you need to spend a bit more just so you minimize the mileage petrol or diesel i'd simply opt for the 30 liter d4d uh, so that's the diesel variant simply because it's a bit more fuel efficient i hear the v6 petrol is quite this servicing and warranty not applicable in this case uh, the car is quite old and you won't really you're not really looking for one in plan at this price point and then uh, when it comes to the real owner yeah the, the real cost of ownership nothing much to go wrong nothing major has been reported and as such if you find a well-kept one from a reputable dealer then expect to only service your diesel variant every 10,000 k's and not pay for anything else so yeah anything else would normally be your way and here are items your consumables that being your, your your discs your tires and your oil yeah basically that nothing other than that nothing has been reported that i know of and it is the car to go for if you want something to drive from cape town to Jobek, uh to you know go and and and, and, and climb over mount kilimanjaro this is the, the car to use yeah these are my final thoughts on the fortuna just buy it buy it uh, between this and the suzuki espresso i'd let go of the caffeine and focus on this well of course after doing a needs analysis thank you so much for watching please do like please do subscribe tell a friend tell a friend see you in the next one